One world currency. The new world order. Those are the roots of trouble. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole? Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is. But it's there. Like a splinter in your mind. Driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Well, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence. On infiltration instead of invasion on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from FederalJack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole here on the Orion Talk Radio Network, oriontalkradio.com. It is July 20th, 2012, and I have a, I guess you could say jammed packed show for you tonight. Uh, I've been going over the uh, day's events in Colorado, and uh, I've been going over it with... uh, two other individuals, and we're going to get into things uh, in depth tonight. I did have uh, a different show planned. I was going to originally have Mike Murphy on tonight, uh, and uh, fortunately, it was very weird how this worked out, but due to time constraints on Mike's end, we ended up recording the interview earlier today. Uh, So I'm going to actually dedicate my entire Sunday show to going over the geoengineering chemtrail activity, play my interview with Mike, and everything else, uh, because I wanted to go over what's going on today, and even one hour wouldn't be able to sufficiently cover what's going on. So I'm going to air my interview from earlier this afternoon with Mike uh, on Sunday. So and it'll be about all about his new movie, geoengineering, chemtrails, everything. Two hours, five to seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But tonight, I want to uh, dedicate the, the two hours to going over the shooting in Colorado, and I, I feel it's warranted. And I'm not trying to, you know, scare anybody or put out, you know, any uh, wrong information. But I feel we need to at least uh, break down what happened, what we know happened, and some of the weird things, and point out some of the weird things right off the bat. Because if we don't, uh, this has the potential to be used to go after guns and uh, people's right to defend themselves and push fear, 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 fear. So uh, all day today I've been going over this, and uh, I I spent about four and a half, five hours going over this with uh, two other individuals, and I decided that we, the three of us decided that we were just going to do the show tonight together. So uh, let me bring them both on the the air, and then we can get into it. Uh, Ken Hildebrand, who's a a host here at the Orion Talk Radio Network, the Information Nation on Sundays. You all know him, 9 to 11 uh, Eastern Standard Time. Tune in Sundays. Ken, welcome to the show. Thank you, Popeye. And uh, my buddy Steve Stars, you all know him. Steve was on uh, this past Wednesday. And actually, uh, Steve's coming on next week, Wednesday. But today, this was a very impromptu thing uh, that we decided to get together to uh, 
bring forth some of this information and point out some of the stuff that we brought forward. So, Steve, welcome back to the show again. Yes, uh, here we are. In a way, I kind of wish I wasn't here because this is such a tragic event. This is my actually my own whole uh, my own uh, hometown, old hometown, very old hometown. I grew up in Aurora, so I know exactly where everything is. We'll talk a little bit about that, but uh, yeah, Pop, I, uh, our hearts go out uh, uh, to the to the people there who are still in bewilderment as to what happened here. We're going to start digging into this and find out. Um, well, that's why we need to dig into this and talk about this, because it, the least we owe them, the people that were killed, is to find out what really happened. Because uh, it's especially disgusting if they were killed and then uh, some dirtbag politician uses their death as a platform to push their political agenda or a much larger agenda like Agenda 21 or gun grabbing and things like that. Uh, so in... In, uh, I guess you could say, uh, in their honor, it, the only appropriate thing to do, it's kind of like with the victims of 9-11 or any other terrorist attack, you know, false flag event like that, it's, or any event, whether it's false flag or not, it's, it's imperative, I think, that we get to the truth of the matter. We owe it to them, at least. You know, people shouldn't have died, you know, it, they died needlessly to begin with, so having their, the, um, the facts of their death be used... Uh, and twisted for someone's political gain is even worse. So I think it's important that, especially in the initial days, now that we have the internet uh, and the ability to reach people worldwide, that we have these discussions going over the um, oddities, to say the least, surrounding what happened. So let's get right into it. And starting off, Ken uh, made a, a, a really interesting observation that the New York City Commissioner, you'd seen an article earlier today on Fox that the New York City Police Commissioner uh, knew certain events uh, about or certain facts about the shooter uh, that hadn't been released yet to the public. And I guess he said he found out from his Fed buddies or, or something. I, I just find it interesting, and I, I know people know people, but I find it interesting how uh, he, he would not only be told this, I, I, I could see how he could be told by somebody in a know, you know, Ken, you were in the military, you know, you, you talk to people you know uh, on, you know, during events like this and days like this, but it, it was weird how he was given this information, this quote-unquote privileged information that hadn't been released yet and he's the first one that started talking about it and not the, uh, the police or anybody over where it actually happened in Colorado. And I, when you brought that to my uh, attention, that, that really stuck out like a red flag because the same kind of um, timeline events happened with the JFK assassination where Oswald was blamed as the shooter uh, in, co in newspapers in foreign countries uh, where at, at the time that he was in that newspaper being labeled as the shooter, he hadn't even been charged yet. Well, they had the same thing on 9-11, Popeye. If you remember, they reported the collapse of Building 7 before it happened. That was that was reported. I think it was uh, the BBC or somebody had reported that. I yeah, re the BBC and Jane Stanley. I I remember that. There's the video th footage of it. The yeah. thing that I found interesting about this is here you've got the police commissioner or chief of police, whatever he, they want to call him, giving out information in an active investigation. I mean, what does he know? Everybody in every town across the United States, I don't care how small, how big, he just got on the phone and called them, and they just blurted out all this information. Something is fishy. Well, that's just what I'm saying. He, he, this is privileged information that maybe he knew somebody that told him, but who gave him the go-ahead to go, ahead, you know, go out and be the, the press spokesperson of what happened? When you know, the police department in the, in the area that it happened hadn't even come out and talked about it yet. So, what gave him that go-ahead? So that shows you that there's obviously some sort of, uh, at the very least, um, th there's some something going on with the the after story, and that's usually the cleanup, the damage control, the cover-up, whatever you want to call it. And that's always where you can see. That's really where things stick out is when you look at the after story and how they handle things afterwards. And right off the bat. The token gun grabbers, you know, and it's very interesting that, again, it was the, uh, the NYPD commissioner because then you get 
his partner in crime, Bloomberg, running around, telling, saying, Romney and Obama need to get tough on gun control. We need to take guns away from people because this is what happens. Random people get shot, which I'd like to add so people are fully well aware, okay, for 100% transparency here, this happened in a gun-free zone. The town in Colorado, Aurora, is a gun-free zone town they have very strict second amendment rights or, or strict regulations on you uh you exercising your second amendment rights and apparently the uh, movie theater is in a gun free zone so the only person that had a weapon in that movie theater was the shooter and he was guaranteed that he was guaranteed that well you know what's funny papa he had four theaters 300 seats each that's 1200 people no yeah. presence but the thing also that sticks out in my mind is, why would you be interviewing the chief of police in New York City, what was that, 3,000 miles away from where the scene of the crime is at? And why are you getting information from the chief of police and not from the local police? That was the first flag that flew up in my face almost immediately. Why are they talking to this guy? <laughs> it's just it's just funny that they, they would just go out and go, oh, commissioner, what, uh, what's going on? And uh, he has no firsthand information whatsoever. So everything that he said is hearsay, but it's pretty damn accurate. Yeah, but how does he know this stuff? You know, uh, you, and I'm sure, uh, case in point, the picture that everybody's showing, right, on TV, Everybody's saying that this is, you know, some people are saying, well, that must be his mugshot. That's not his mugshot, because if that is his mugshot, where's his supposed red goatee and red dyed hair? Yeah, right. There is no mugshot that's being released by uh, Dan Oates, uh, Sheriff, uh, or uh, Police Chief Dan Oates, uh, Popeye, at this point. So, yeah, the, the, but like what you're saying, it's very strange because, uh, you know, what, what Kim brought up was that, you know, look, you've got a, you know, all these people in this theater at 12 o'clock midnight if, in th four theaters sold out. All right. There's nobody there that can protect anyone. And this is a very violent movie in a part of a neighborhood, this part of Aurora has a lot of drug activity and a lot of gang activity. It's not a rundown area, but it is uh, pretty active in terms of the Crips and the Bloods or some of these other organizations I know because I'm from this area. And uh, it's very, I mean, there could be just interaction between these gangs. There could be all kinds of things that could happen. There is no, nobody there, according to Police Chief Dan Oates from the Aurora Police Department. So, so that's that's so, a big that's a big red flag right there, Steve. Hmm. At, at an event like Ken said, there was twelve hundred people, right, roughly, in, in there. It's in an area that is known to have gang violence. Okay, um, when was the last time you saw uh, the uh, officials in any area, as of late, allow any sort of gathering, whether it be peaceful protesting, whatever, of more than twenty or thirty people, without having some sort of police presence right so and it, it and for people to say well maybe they're cutting back well the movie theater knowing they would have such a big you know crowd would normally i've seen it they have it down here in south florida all the time you know friggin' food stores in bad areas do it they'll hire the cops as security guards when they're off duty it's they call it special duty or whatever the hell it is so Sure. Why were there not cops stationed by the doors? Why were there not cops? And I'm not saying that it requires it, but if if you're in an area where you know you have gang problems, all this other stuff, the the police would have automatically done this. So why didn't they automatically do it on the one day that this nut job happens to come bounding through the door with a bunch of guns and tear gas? So that's another thing. How the hell did he get tear gas? And people can say, well, you can buy tear gas illegally. I'm sure you can get it on the black market. or the Yeah, but he, that would entail that he had help getting this. He would have had to have known someone to get that tear gas. You can't just go to a gun show, although I'm sure uh, Bloomberg and the rest of these anti-gun morons would have you believe that, that you can go to a gun show and just buy grenades and, uh, and tear gas and everything else. No, you can't, okay? You cannot buy tear gas, and you can't get your hands on it unless you're military or law enforcement. So somebody had to have had that and somehow allowed it to get in someone else's hands, and then it got to him. Therefore, being more than one person involved, by definition, unless the guy, you know, cloned himself, 
And then, therefore, he would still be more than one person involved. He, there is no getting around it. You know, how does this guy walk around? He's got uh, groin protectors, leg protectors, full body armor, throat protector. They said he left it in a bag outside the door. So, Ken, when, when, when he left his stuff outside the door, was it just outside the door or was his car was parked close by and that's what happened? He went out to his car and then came back in. Well, the latest report was <clears throat> he was inside the theater watching the movie. At a point, he kind of like faked a uh, cell phone call, got up, and walked out the, um, the emergency exit. Now, having worked in a theater, if you don't shut off the alarm, the alarm goes off. That's what they're there for. In case there's a fire, boom, somebody hits that door, it goes off, it notifies everybody. The alarms didn't go off. He goes outside, and he had his car parked by the door. He, you know, initially they said he had his stuff by the door. Came out later, he had his car parked by the door. Went into his car, got dressed, got his guns, went back to that door, and normally there is no way to open those doors from the outside. And he just opened the door and threw two canisters of gas in there and then went in and started shooting. It's, um, so when, when you go from the point of going out a fire exit, and those doors are fire exits. Today, they might control them from somewhere else, you know, where they can just throw a switch. But when I was in, I used to have to go down to the to the emergency, to, to the exit, and use the key to shut the alarm off, and then I would open the door and let people out when we had, you know, an overflow of people there. Today, it might just be, well, we throw the switch to people walk out. Then when the door is closed, we turn it back on again. No, they probably use some sort of an electric key, even if they still if they use a key, well, yeah. you know, like a like a detex clock, like a, a security guard would if they were making their rounds. They have the electric version of that thing now, but they probably would still need to do the same thing. Yeah, and it didn't go off because that you know fire code is you have to have that thing going with the alarm on and everything else unless you deactivate it. Now that's if you un you know like you said you would go down if it was a big overflow at the end of a thing you'd have the ushers there and they could unlock the you know turn it off open the door let people out and then they would close the door secure it and turn the alarm back on. So yeah. why why would and how did this guy get back in from the street side? Normally you can't get back in from the street side on those theater doors. They close, oh. you're done. Here's a story here, guys, that uh, apparently has just been taken in from Aurora, Colorado. It says, one of the people fleeing the mass shooting at the midnight screen of the Dark Knight uh, at the Denver Area Movie Theater says he tried to shut the door on the suspected gunman. 23-year-old Eric Hunter says he and his friends made their, made their way to an exit door after seeing smoke and hearing shots during the movie. When they opened the door, Hunter says they saw two, two teenage girls, one of whom had been shot in the mouth. Hunter says he was about to close the door when he saw the shooter dressed in a black bulletproof vest and gas mask approaching. Hunter says he held the door closed and the gunman banged on it for 10 seconds. Afraid that the shooter would start firing through the door, Hunter said he let it go and managed to get out of the theater. Now, I don't know how that story fits in the exact scenario of where they were, but does that make any sense, Ken, to your scenario of theaters and doors and exits and things like that? No. None whatsoever. Well, the doors, maybe he's referring to the doors going out from the theater to the lobby. That could be. But yeah, that's it. what it sounds like, because it sounds like he was already inside with injured people. Yeah, there was shooting and smoke, according to the story. But the yeah, kid tried so to hold the door closed, and he was banging on it for 10 seconds. Well, there's nobody there to, 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 to help these people, obviously, as we said before, uh, Popeye. There is no security in this location. So yeah, but that, that that's very questionable. There's no security, and again, it just so happens that this mass shooting happens in a gun-free zone, so that there's definitely no chance that anybody there is going to be armed except for the guy with the gun shooting innocent people. See, right. if this happened down here in South Florida, things would have been much different. He would have gotten two or three shots off, and there would have been you just would have heard guns coming out, and there would have been return fire. Okay, and I don't care how much body armor you got on, he would have been hit with a wall of lead. I'm not kidding. Look what happened in Florida the other day, a little north, of, uh, a couple hours north of where I live. There was a, uh, an internet cafe, and two guys came in, one with a baseball bat, and the other one had a gun. And they were running around, and uh, they, I don't think they were in there more than 15 seconds. And the one guy, the guy with the gun turned around, and when he turned his back, 71-year-old patron who was in there who had a concealed weapons permit, looked like he had a little 38 or th little 380 rather, a little pocket gun, drew his weapon out, and... Pop, pop, started shooting at them and had them turned around and out the door and chased them out, shooting at them. Pop, 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 pop. 
Do you know the only people that got shot were the two perpetrators? No one else in there got injured. People in there were saying, I'm glad he was there with his gun. He's a hero. He saved us. Can you imagine if he didn't have his gun, how many innocent people could have been hurt or killed? Well, now you can see what happens when someone doesn't have a gun to protect themselves. That's right. And this isn't about politics. This is about people being able to protect themselves against uh, any sort of violence. And unfortunately... Uh, what happens is there are people that do control things and that are in power and they have uh, the ability to control people and set up situations like this so that it plays on people's emotions and then they can, they can therefore get people to willingly give up their own defense of themselves. I mean, think about it. it if, if we're to buy into this police state, right, and this, this ever-expanding uh, culture of cops and agents and, and you know people with guns protecting us and we don't need to be able to protect ourselves this is a perfect example of what happens uh, when you rely on that system the system failed it was a gun free zone okay obviously the bad guy still had a gun right if you want to call him a bad guy let's break it down to simple terms the bad guy had a gun and the good guys didn't the innocent people did not so it didn't your gun free zone didn't stop the bad guy from getting a gun didn't okay did it so that 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 disproves that theory right there squashed goodbye gone okay now what's the second thing that was disproved and squashed and pushed to the side the fact that the cops will always be there to protect you where were the police where was security all those moviegoers were just targets now, if we're supposed to live in a police state where there's cops all over the place and everywhere you turn there's someone with a badge and a gun for your protection of course where were they in this instance? Why is it every time there's a mass shooting, the security that you're supposed to rely on, that's supposed to come protect you, is never there? And your, it, your ability to protect yourself in those areas has been taken away. This is the same thing that happened in the UK and in Australia. There were mass shootings. It was in uh, uh, you know, predominantly gun-free zones. And then at all, guns all across the country had to be banned because, you know, you know, one crazy nut could get his hand on a gun so nobody could have them. Right. Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech all over again, too. You know, and the, I heard the guy might have been wearing Nike sneakers the day before he committed the murders. So I guess we should ban Nike sneakers. And anybody that wears Nikes uh, must be obviously an insane maniac and want to kill everybody around them. So they all have to be rounded up and executed immediately. Otherwise, none of us are safe. Doesn't that sound insane? Well, that's what taking away your right to self-defense because of one bad individual. That's the same thing. It's on the same level of insanity. All right, we're going to break. Stay tuned. We're back in a few minutes. More on this tragic shooting in Colorado when we get back. Now, as I said earlier, one of the biggest red flags you will see in an event like this is how it's handled immediately afterwards. And the handling of it and the political glad handing that's going on uh, with the anti-gun uh, nuts and, and one after the other, whether it be uh, politicians or even, uh, well, I guess you, I don't want to call them uh, reporters because they're not reporters, but we'll say mouthpieces of the mainstream uh, dinosaur collapsing media. And uh, they all have this specific... Uh, talking point memo list that they go from, and it's the same thing. Guns are bad, you got to take guns away. And to prove my point, I want to point out something that Ken uh, had sent me earlier, and that is an article uh, from, uh, I think it's Reason Magazine, uh, or no, it's, Bre it's from Breitbart, that's what it is. And um, it's about CNN's Piers Morgan exploiting this thing to push gun control. And right off the bat, he starts tweeting things like, horrendous details from this Colorado cinema shooting. America has got to do something about its gun laws. Now is the time. Again, as I'll point out, this happened in a gun-free zone where there aren't guns allowed. Okay, So, so this goes to show you that it, this happened in an area where they banned guns, right? People can't have them. Just like they want, like Piers is pointing out, should happen, that we should have even tougher gun control laws other than, I don't know how you could have tougher than you can't have a gun in a gun-free zone. I, I, don't know, I, I don't know how much tougher you can get than that. But they've banned guns in this area, and yet these people were still shot, 
and there was no police officers around to protect them. And then he continues and goes on with things like, more Americans will buy guns after this to defend themselves, and so the dangerous spiral descends. When and how does it stop? And then lunatics like this will always try and get guns. It should be a 100,000 times harder than it is for them to do so. That's my point. Really? It is hard for lunatics to get guns. And first of all, how do you know that someone is going to go out and shoot up a place unless they've already done it? Well, you know, Popeye, they said that this guy bought them at um, Bass Pro Shops and at Gander Mountain. The FBI did the background checks. They came back clean. So that's how he bought the guns. Well, yeah, but see, that's the thing. They always say, oh, well, there's loopholes. No, there's not loopholes. The FBI does a background check, okay? You get they. He bought the guns. If he bought the guns legally, fine. But see, that's that's why he didn't buy them on the street. It, it, this is and this is why this shows that this is more of a setup, because he bought them legally. He passed the FBI background check, and it, he can you know conveniently then goes out and kills people, right? And everybody goes, we need tougher laws. We need more strict laws. I mean, come on, the laws protect us. No, how are you going to legislate this? I saw an interview uh, from a guy. I forget his name. A reporter from Reason. Uh, on RT earlier, and the uh, the anchor was trying to debate him about how you know there, well there's got to be some you know something's got to be done because see that's what everybody calls for this is outrageous what happened and this is how this little game works I'll explain this they play on the emotion see they get people it's problem reaction solution yep. the Hegelian dialectic they create the problem said psychopath with guns right he comes in shoots people kills innocent people. The reaction is horror. Oh my God. Which is not to be made fun of. I, I, it's very human re, uh, reaction, which they know is going to happen. And when I say they, I mean the people that control the situation. And then the, the solution to this reaction and this problem is already in the can. It's called gun control, a bigger police state, less rights, no self-defense. And they they already have it waiting in the wings. And if you were thinking logically, you, you, you would probably look at their solution and go, well, that doesn't make sense, you know, blah, 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 blah. But you're not thinking logically. You're reacting emotionally based on what you saw, the traumatic event, the trauma-based mind control, okay? And you're reacting on it. And that's what they want. That's why the news media follows something like this with they were doing the local media I had this live stream this morning and I was listening to it and I have to tell you it was one of the most disgusting things that I've ever seen because these anchors and everybody were playing up their emotions and were so I mean there were people that were very you could see they were upset and then of course the 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 reporter had to get in the guy's face and interview him for 10 minutes and keep pressing him not not let the guy go cuz he's in shock nope you got to put that camera in his face they were exploiting this so that the people seeing this at their homes would they would feel that raw emotion that's how they play you okay and then you get people that are masters of this crap like piers morgan that comes on and he says says things like because everybody respects piers morgan right because he's a fair guy he comes on we need tougher gun laws this guy was able to get guns legally and look he was crazy Obviously, you, 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 they should have known he was crazy. How? How are you going to know that someone's going to do something? You cannot legislate away bad things. See, this is how these politicians with a political agenda get you to buy into their BS. There is no way for them to legislate away bad things. Bad things are going to happen. If you're prepared for the bad thing, you can mitigate it. But you can never, ever, ever legislate away bad things. Politicians, ex uh, they, uh, what do you call it? They exploit these, um, these, these horrendous, horrific events, things like a mass shooting or 9-11 or whatever. They exploit these things and your fear that comes about as a result of it. And then they, uh, uh, the, the end result of exploiting that fear is you're exploited yourself. And you're used and abused and your rights are taken away from you, and you willingly give them up because, hey, the government's going to protect you. But again, I will point out for the hundredth time that this is a prime example of how they cannot protect you. Their little police state doesn't work. 
There's surveillance all over the place. They they live. They, they, this theater happened in a gun f- or happened to reside in a gun free zone. Uh, the people were shot and killed in a quote unquote gun free zone. So they have gun free zone, gun ban, no gun laws saying no guns in this zone, which is what they want to pass. And these people were still shot and killed. Where were the police? Did they protect you? No. System fails. If everybody was armed, they would have done it themselves. I just get, it, get, it gets me riled up when I see them using this, you know, an, an event like this, and I see how they play people with their emotional heartstrings, and they play them, oh, oh, feel sorry for the people, which you should. It's horrific what happened. But these politicians and people like Piers Morgan and all these anti-gun nuts and all these gun grabbers, they're the ones that your anger should be focused at because they're the ones that are exploiting this. And the fact that they're doing it so fast shows their hand. Makes you wonder, was this a setup to begin with? Very convenient, by the way, that the UN, uh, the UN gun ban treaty is up for uh, being signed and then voted on. You know, It's going to be signed within the next few weeks and then voted on over the course of the next few months in the Senate. And here you have this mass tragedy happening. And the same type of stuff happened back when the Clinton administration was in office. And I may remind you that a lot of the holdovers from the Clinton administration are in power again, like Eric Holder. Okay? And so you know what I'm talking about? Go look up the L.A. shootout. Go look what happened then. Bunch of guys in body armor with machine guns ran around shooting people. This was during the time, this is before cops had assault rifles. Most cops only had shotguns. All of a sudden after that, every cop car had... Um, Assault rifles in them. And this was around the same time they were debating the assault weapons ban. Ooh, big surprise. Or how about the anti-terror legislation and all of a sudden Oklahoma City happens? Does anybody see a pattern? Because I do. You just got to pay attention. It's called pattern recognition. It's one of the things that I was very good at and made my job as an investigator when I was a PI very easy because I could spot patterns. Now, I don't know about you two, but... I find it highly suspicious, and I know Steve actually was uh, – you, you wanted to get into this, Steve, so I'll shut up for a few minutes and let you get into it. But the fact that there were no cops at this event is very, very suspect, and you had a, a few good points to make on that, so I'll give you the floor. Well, there were no cops injured at all in the making of this event. The whole thing, because after he's arrested, apparently without a lot of controversy, this happens out you know, behind the theater, he's picked up. And one of the things he tells the police is that his apartment is booby trapped. So nobody's going to get hurt there either. So there were no cops killed in this event or injured. You know, uh, it's very strange, the whole situation, because uh, I don't have a, a big liking for uh, Chief Dan Oates at all because of the arrest of 40 people earlier. We could talk about that story. I don't know if we brought it all up, but he, this guy was in the news just recently, uh, not too long ago. You know, uh, this was uh, back on June 5th. Uh, Inns justifies the means. This story by Kurt Nemo that he, he posted on Infowars. Police detained and handcuffed 40 innocent bystanders after a bank robbery in Aurora. Colorado, same place, okay, June 4th, nearly two dozen cars were stopped near a Wells Fargo bank, you know, this is, of course, Federal Reserve affiliated bank, and the occupants held without probable cause as police searched for a suspect. Police Chief Daniel Oates demonstrated his ignorance of the Fourth Amendment when he told CBS News in Denver the ends justify the means after the illegal roundup snared the suspect. He he described the mass detainment and handcuffing as lawful and necessary. Okay, there's pictures of women in tank tops with little kids sitting on the corner next to police cars. Forty people handcuffed. He says the law is clear that investigative detentions are lawful for a reasonable period of time. This is Oates, of course. Reasonableness is determined by the facts and circumstances at the issue and the facts and circumstances where the suspect was in one of the 19 cars. So they stopped 19 cars, arrested, t- put, took everybody out, um, handcuffed them, and they found their bank robber, apparently. Well, the alleged bank robbery. But anyhow, this is probable cause under the Fourth, Fourth Amendment is in effect when a person is detained or arrested and is not free to leave. There was no probable cause here, and they were detained and arrested. So this guy has no qualms about just taking citizens right off the street, handcuffing them, and getting his culprit. But yet, in this situation, a gun-free zone, and you've got, what, I think it was three to four theaters at least sold out with a midnight showing of Batman, and, you know, which is a pretty violent and atrocious movie. There's a lot of gang activity. There's a lot of crazy people who drink and do drugs late, late at night and go to films and stuff like this. And there's no cops. 
you know. And then as soon as he's detained, when they he already they already know that his his apartment is booby trapped, and so there's nobody going to get hurt in this situation. They're going to spend the next four or five days. They tell us taking this whole contraption apart. He's got loud music playing in there and all this stuff. The whole thing is very very crazy. I mean, this is coming from uh, my point of view, of course. I I grieve a little bit because of you know my friends in Aurora. I still have friends that live within probably a mile or two as the crow flies from the location of this this theater, uh, Century 16. I know the area very well, Popeye, and uh, I'm really disturbed by the fact that this kind of stuff can happen and that we have all these knee-jerkers complaining about, you know, the, the way there are guns available in this country, and yet we see people like in Virginia Tech, we see it over and over, people being herded into these situations where they're incapable of defending themselves, and then somebody gets in there to shoot it up and then the, the Pierce Morgans and the knee-jerk idiots start claiming that we need more gun laws. My God, they're leaving us defenseless while they run over. They arrest us on the street, you know, trying to find one bank robber. Look at all the accidents they cause with high-speed chases. Yeah, and all their laws didn't protect any of those people. Uh, you pointed out the police station is right up the street from the, the movie theater. That's why they had a response time of like 90 seconds. Uh, it's um, uh, I've right. heard it was like yeah. 90 seconds or a little bit over 90 seconds, you know, that they were there. That's like a minute and a half. So they were right up the street. And yet this guy, a lot of people said that there was a second person involved and everything else. And, uh, you know, how could he get off that many shots? Well, I thought about it. And Ken brought up a good point. Somebody said he might have had a beta mag, which would allow him to have about 100 rounds. Yes, he did. As a matter of fact, that's been confirmed. It seems to be confirmed. I think. Okay. It well, see, that's more. Again, that I'm going to tell you what. That's a red flag that points to more of a setup. And why do I say that? Because what's the one talking point that these anti-gun people harp on constantly? Oh, you can't. People shouldn't have access to be able uh, to to get. Uh, magazines that hold more than you know ten rounds because then they can just go around shooting people and kill more people without the you know the need of reloading and right. if, <clears throat> and then they always say well if he if he had to reload somebody could rush him right and then the person would be shot and if you don't know about that go look up the Lubby's Texas massacre and find out what happened when people tried rushing the guy that was there that was shooting that was you know, you know, he was he would shoot people, and while he dropped his mag, a couple different, uh, I guess, once or twice, he was like in uh, the case of the one woman, uh, her her father tried rushing the guy, and he got shot in the chest, and he was mortally wounded. So obviously, it only takes a few seconds. She says it only takes a few seconds for somebody to drop a magazine out and slap in a fresh one. So don't think that just because you know you could sit here and say, oh well, you know, fifteen rounds versus ten rounds or whatever that would that would give people some time, and we should give them that time. She she even this was and this was testimony back in the nineties, okay, in front of the same people like Charlie Schumer. Chuck Schumer, you should see his face too when she's this woman whose parents were killed in this massacre. Okay, you'd think she would be pissed and want guns taken away, but she didn't. And you would think uh, that uh, they would show her some respect, but he's sitting there rolling his eyes as she's talking and everything else. Uh, you know, I guess he's too busy to listen to what she had to say, but she, she nailed it. She hit the nail right in the head. It doesn't matter if you have 15 rounds or 10 rounds. Anyway, the the reason I say that this is a red flag is because this whole argument about uh, the the capacity of uh, ammunition inside of magazines has been argued and one of the talking points of the anti gun lobby for years, very long time now. So to see the shooter have a beta mag, and I'm not saying that well, it's obviously that points it out, but it just goes to show that if you were gonna, it, it, you know, if you're the if you're trying to set it up to go after certain things, well, there's just one more reason to and thing to be able to go after. This guy had a beta mag. You see, he was able to kill so many people, and he didn't have to reload. And it don't there was only one of them. So there, there for all intents and purposes, probably only was one shooter. There might have been a handler, but. I'm sure that with a beta mag, he could have killed all those people by himself without a doubt. But it doesn't matter. He could have done it with a 45 round magazine as well. Okay, he could have done it with two 45 round mags and a couple pistol mags. He could have done it with incendiaries. He could have done it with a lot of things. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. The point is, it's there's a lot of shady things, and the the fact that they're gonna go, I guarantee you, I'm willing to bet within the next two or three days they're gonna go after um, 
the amount of rounds this guy had. He had an assault rifle that you know he was able to get be- a beta mags for. They're going to try to ban beta magazines. You watch. They're going to try to ban beta mags. I'm willing to bet it that they're going to try to ban beta mags. Yeah, that's the least that they're going to go after. Of course, they're, they're planning to try to take guns away from everybody, of course. But, I mean, at first they've got to at least try to get rid of these beta mags. Any kind of rifle that is capable of delivering a lot of round uh, a lot of round shot in a very short period of time. Some say that this beta mag jammed somewhere in the process, but I think they found it. I mean, he had well, two that happens, lot- which is yeah. not that's not uncommon. Beta magazines, uh, depending on where you get them and who makes them, they could be crappy ones. And a lot of times, if uh, if it's not uh, cleaned or if it's been used before and you don't clean it, and you get depending on the ammo you shoot and everything else, you could get gunk build up in there and it could jam. So uh, you know, it, it, those things aren't foolproof. But before we, you know, we we get too far off, I want to, you know, mention your point that you made earlier to me off air, Steve, which was the fact that, again, where were the police? Where was the security? Th- these cops are willing to handcuff, you know, what forty people for looking for one bank robber in the middle of the day, just yank people out of their cars and everything else. But uh, in a situation where you know you have gangs again and gang activity you're going to have 1200 rowdy people up at midnight to see uh, an action adventure movie with a lot of killing and everything else in it and you're going to say that the police chief wasn't smart enough to say maybe they need to have one or two people over there to keep an eye on things really yeah it's, it's pretty pretty bad uh, police uh, you know policy if you ask me it, well it just doesn't make sense because it's like the opposite of what you, what they say they that they need to do for protection and it just goes to show you again that here you are, right up the street from the police station. Where, you know you have cameras all over the place, and this uh, you know this gun-free zone where supposedly nobody has guns. And now there's laws; it's a gun-free zone. You can't carry guns there. But did the law physically stop the guy from carrying the gun in there and perpetrating this crime? No. So legislation does not save you. A police state does not save you. Was anybody carrying a cop in their pocket when it happened and just pulled out the cop and pressed, you know, you know, yeah. the arrest button and let him go? No. So this police state with a, you know, a cop in your back pocket and cameras all over the place and laws restricting your ability to defend yourself obviously don't work. But you know what does, which has been proved already this week, and not just in theory, but in an actual test you know put to the test is an armed 71 year old man was able to make two uh, assailants you know slash robbers uh, one of them who had a gun the other one had a baseball bat there were two of them not just one two of them and he was able to make both you know get both of them out and nobody was injured except the two guys that came in to do the robbery and hurt other people okay so uh, and this was in an area that was not a gun free zone and the guy was allowed to protect himself so you tell me. You could, you could sit there and pontificate all you want, all you anti-gun people. You could sit there and tell me all these BS statistics that you try to come up with. You tell me. In th- you could tell me in theory, but you show me, I should say. You show me in actual physical uh, real-world experiment, I guess, where your theory of not being able to protect yourself works. Because guess what? Here's a real-world scenario, two different real-world scenarios where it happened, where a, a situation uh, where some people's lives were in mortal danger, okay, and people could have been killed, and in one case they were killed, okay, and in the case that they were killed, nobody could fight back. In the case that they weren't killed, people could fight back. Does it take a rocket scientist to figure out the results of said uh, you know, uh, I don't want to call it experiment, but uh, looking at this, said investigation, we'll call it. So if, it, if you're looking at this as an investigation into, uh, or a, a, a study uh, is a better term, into um, self-defense, what do you think your outcome should be? Well, that obviously the ability to defend oneself makes the situation turn out better than the ability to not defend oneself and be a complete and utter victim. It's just... The mind control that's used on people, I hear people, we should ban guns. And what would that do? It was banned. It was a gun-free zone. It will not stop you from getting hurt. Might even make it worse. Might even make it worse. It made it worse because nobody could defend themselves. Like I said, did you see anybody carrying a cop in their pocket? I didn't. Right.
Yeah. It yeah, just it's made a- it worse. It made it real. It made it. It's just. I don't know. I'm just. I. I. I see this onslaught being put forth through the media already. It's not even 24 hours, and it's already, you know, hate guns, hate anybody that has guns, fear, 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 fear. more fear porn. This is more of what they love to put out is fear porn. All right, guys, first hour is up, hour number two coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be back with more. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with hour number two here on tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. It is Friday, July 20th, 2012. I'm your host, Popeye, from FederalJack.com, and tonight I am joined by my good friends Steve Starves and Ken Hildebrand, and we've been going over the uh, shooting, the mass shooting in Colorado that happened at the premiere of the Dark Knight movie earlier, the, or I guess, yeah, late this morning, uh, about uh, midnight into, between midnight and I guess 12.30 it happened sometime, like, what, quarter after midnight it happened? So I guess yeah, te- right around there. Yeah, so I, 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 technically it was still this morning that it happened. Um, there's just a lot of shady stuff involved in it. It's not as clear and cut and dry as the mainstream media would have you believe. And it's very interesting how uh, within less than 12 hours, you have the typical anti-gun people already out with uh, you know, almost like a prepared speech, like they already had in the can waiting for this, uh, to pontificate about why people should have less rights to defend themselves, when in reality, uh, people should look at this as what it is, and this is a shining example of how this police state will not protect you and that they cannot save you and that you should have the ability to protect yourself because it took place in an area where there were no guns. It was a gun-free zone, okay? People could not have guns by law, so there's a gun law, right? People couldn't have guns. It's supposed to keep you safe, right? And it didn't. And you have the police station right up the street. You have, uh, you know, a police state with cameras and uh, cops all over the place. Remember, the cops swear they'll keep you protected, and that's why it's imperative that they handcuff 40 people in the middle of the street to catch one bank robber, right? Because they have to protect everybody. The ends justify the means. But yet, these very same people were nowhere to be found when the crap hit the fan, and these people were shot and killed in some instances. And where where was their protection because they couldn't their right to protect themselves with a weapon was taken away from them under the guise that the government the the local government the police would protect them but where was that protection it was not there so this is a clear cut example of how not being able to defend yourself and relying on somebody in a costume with some shiny little badge is not going to protect you or save your life what say you guys steve well, absolutely. This is a classic example, of course. You know, I mean, uh, here you have everybody herded into a, a very dangerous location, and one madman gets in there and shoots everybody up. And there's no one there who can protect themselves from it at all, of course. And this is, you know, right down the street from the police station. Uh, and then, you know, the whole story just unfolds in a strange manner. We have very little as of yet to know about this person, James Holmes. Uh, he apparently was a star student. Uh, there's no reason to understand why uh, you know he was a, he wasn't some sort of a deadbeat or anything like that, but he wigged out. I mean, if you pardon the pud, you know, uh, dyed his hair bright red, and uh, went on this shooting rampage for some reason, and we still have no reason to know why this all happened. But we do know one thing: there's going to be a lot of controversy about gun control right now, while the UN is trying to to set up this international treaty of gun disarmament all over the world. And uh, we know that Mr. Obama is strongly behind this. George Soros is backing a lot of this, and the knee jerking liberals are telling us that we got to give up more guns. To keep ourselves safe from this kind of a situation where a gun might have solved the solution with somebody packing something there. I mean, might have been able to take this guy out. It's just really, it's really strange. It, the whole thing makes absolutely no sense at all to me, but it looks, I dare say, you know, without uh, any strong confirmation, it looks staged, if you ask me. Staged. You know, I don't want to make light of the situation because it is a tragedy. But when you get right down to the numbers, 71 people were either were either hurt or killed, and you're going to take 
300 million people and put them on lockdown. What does that tell you about our politicians? Well, they're just exploiting the tragedy. You know, like Rahm Emanuel said, your, your buddy up there in Chicago, like he said, uh, never let a good crisis go to waste, especially if you've created said crisis and you have your response to said crisis sitting on the shelf just waiting for such an event to happen. You know, the same thing with the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act wasn't written in response to 9-11. The Patriot Act was sitting, already written, waiting for just such an event. Well, it's an event just so happened to occur. I mean, go back to World War II and the Reichstag fire. Before, well, actually, before World War II. What in the heck did they do there to build? They did the whole thing. The Nazis did the whole thing. The next day they came out with the equivalent to our Patriot Act and they disarmed everybody. They started taking away everybody's freedoms. They're doing the same thing here, except they're doing it incrementally, little by little. Well, because they can't throw the frogs into the boiling water, so they have to... Because everybody's armed here, so it's a little bit different of a situation. It's a little more uh, delicate. It has to be handled a little bit differently. But they do it so well. They do it very masterfully because they sit there and they create events like this. They have situations like this where even if this were um, an event that was just this guy being a lone nut, which I'm sorry, but the evidence so far doesn't support that. Not meaning that there was maybe another shooter, but meaning that he wasn't controlled and that this this isn't a staged event. Um, even if it was just, you know, a, a, a happenstance type thing, they would use this uh, and push this to push their agenda. And they would twist things and change things in, in the cover-up or the, in the said investigation of it. And again, that's one of the biggest ways to see whether or not something stinks is their reaction to it. Well, you know, Steve brought up a good point during the break when we were talking about this. Steve, why don't you, why don't you go ahead and talk. Uh, which one? Which one was that? You're talking about the, the, the apartment or some of the other things we talked about? I'm sorry, the Ken. Apartment. The apartment. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, there's uh, some strange things that happened there, of course. You know, there's a story here that this loud music was lured to people uh, to the booby-trapped, the quote, booby-trapped apartment. Um, the neighbor there, Chris Rodriguez, told 7 News that he and his girlfriend started hearing loud techno music coming from above them at the apartment around midnight. And then uh, 15 minutes later, she goes up and knocks on the door trying to get their attention, asking these people, or whoever it was, of course, there was no one there, uh, according to the story, to turn the music down. Well, she jiggles the door a little bit, and she notices that it starts to move, and she's, she can go in. Well, she decides not to, apparently. But then the music goes off at 1 o'clock in the morning. At 2 a.m., Rodriguez City, hear, she heard a loud crash, and then a knock on the door, and it's the SWAT team, and they're in full armor, and they pull these people out and everybody there. So my question is whether anybody got into that apartment in between the time of uh, all of this happening, and then they said that the apartment was booby-trapped. I mean, there's stories that are going around here that no one can confirm pertaining to the the apartment being booby trapped and all this you know i don't really know if that's honest or not that's one of my points there um well the, the, the need for the loud music might have been uh you see it would be interesting to find out what the swat team found when they went in there but um you know there could have been somebody moving stuff around or making noise and they didn't want them to you know although playing loud music would draw attention uh, to me the loud music you know being on repeat like that is more uh, of an indication of a mind control type thing because repetition is one of the ways that they get people into a state of uh, uh, I don't want to call it um, uh, I guess like being in a programmable state you know a being a, being able to uh, have information downloaded to you uh, per se from you know Another, it'd be like, um, what I'm trying to think of what Kathy O'Brien called it. Basically, like having the keys to someone's mind. Yeah. And if they could unlock it, and again, you know, when you look into the mind control aspect, Steve, the, the whole uh, Joker thing, if that's the reality, if that's not them just trying to blur, because uh, that, that also seems, if he did do that, that almost seems like whoever controlled him was trying to uh, blur the reality between the movies that people see and, and uh, you know, reality that we actually experience, which they already try to do to a degree as it is, and this would just push it. But the whole Joker thing, also, if you look at it, if you understand mind control, you understand how they 
compartmentalize people and they or and that they literally can create different compartments with a different personality in each one so uh for instance you'll have you know one person could be it, the person could be you know five a little five foot tall you know 80 pound woman and one personality she's uh, very demure one personality she's a whore the next personality you know she knows you know she's a black belt and she could you know snap your neck so it, it, who knows that could have been a program personality and that music going off could have been uh, you know, just uh, sometimes, you know, Murphy's Law does kick in in these things because they are planned by men. So not everything goes according to plan. And that could have been maybe his programming music going off, uh, you know, yeah. ac- accidentally too late or, or something or whatever. Maybe somebody was dicking around in there and looking for something and maybe they were trying to find that. Maybe there was a CD or something that they needed to get their hands on because there was something subliminal hidden in the music, and maybe they accidentally pressed play or something. I mean, that, that kind of stuff does happen. The My fact that they were as Popeye, as they were looking at the from outside, they were looking at the booby traps, and they said there were so many drop-off circuits that they didn't know where to start with this. Yeah, the bomb squad said something like they're going to end up being in there for like two days or more. Yeah, now, how in the say. heck? I mean, here you got a guy. I mean, okay, granted, he's extremely smart, but in 30 days, he turns around, he buys his weapons, he buys his magazines, he buys his armor, everything else that he buys, and he has the time to set up all of this elaborate booby trap section, which probably I'm willing to bet he doesn't know a damn thing about. Somebody was in there setting up for him. Well, could, that's, you need to have like EOD type experience to be able to set up stuff like that. You know what I mean? Squad doesn't even know how to handle this stuff. Well, th- there you go, dude. So th- this is obviously done by some professional, not some Yahoo in his backyard. But the media will tell you it's just some guy who, you know, he built it with stuff that he bought at Radio Shack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's extremely smart. They'll play that. They'll play that card. Yeah, but how do they? How how are they going to say that? Because he was he was in some because uh, he was was he going to medical school? I think it was. And by the way, it's interesting because the the program that he was part of, he was taking part in the program as well, and it was a neuroscience program. Yeah. Right. So tell me again that they wouldn't have access to control his brain. It's really odd. You know, it is really odd because the CU Med Center at Denver has moved over there to the old Fitzsimmons Army Hospital location, which isn't far from that area. I mean, as I said before, I just live within almost a mile and a half as a crow flies from all these locations. Uh, this whole area has been overrun by spooks to a large extent because there's been a big move uh, to to Buckley Langley, as I understand. Of course, this is, you know, hush hush or nobody seems to know anything about it, but there have been a lot of Langley people coming out to live in Aurora. There's a whole lot lot of activity and it's just a hotbed of all this stuff going on in this area between what used to be the cia campus there at lowry air force base and then uh, buckley airfield you know with the big golf ball and tennis uh, you know complex and everything like that uh, it's very hard to say what's really happening there but this is you know cu med is is not you know it's not you wouldn't think part of this kind of an operation but this guy's a neuroscience major he's been taking studies uh implanting to take studies on schizophrenia uh drug addiction substance abuse all these different kinds of things he's a model student and then the next thing you know he becomes a madman and this is the question so we've got a lot of investigation here i mean look what happened with sirhan Tehran and papa you and i were talking about jolly and west it's the same thing that's why i said it wouldn't surprise me if um you know, somehow somebody uh, connected to Jolly and West or you and Cameron uh, or that whole group will eventually emerge to come see this guy in jail or something. I mean, that's the way it works. They the, These people come out of nowhere. Let us help. You know, we're we're accredited. We're blah, 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 blah. Because uh, it, it just it, this whole thing reeks of setup. Uh, it, it, I, I don't know how to get this point across to people. Uh, you know, I, I, I just can't, I, I can't hammer this thing home enough that this stinks to high heaven. And again, if you see somebody that's uh, connected to like Jolly and West or the the you and Camerons or you know what I'm talking about, Steve, if you see anybody that's connected to this mind control stuff or anybody that's connected that's connect you know connected to someone that's connected to them and they approach this individual or it comes out that this person is is uh connected to it that's just going to prove it more now that's just 
that's pure speculation. But it, just judging from the area alone, um, and they the media was all over Columbine. They were quick to bring that up. We should, and we'd be remiss to not mention the fact that uh, uh, that had a lot of mind control aspects to it too, as well as one of the kids' parents being uh, an employee of Raytheon. And Raytheon, if you uh, go st- if you look into this mind control stuff, they're involved in some of the uh, technology that is used to facilitate uh, a certain type of mind control using um, holograms and uh, and lights and sounds and stuff like that. I forget exactly what it's called. Kathy O'Brien talks about it, but uh, NASA is involved in it too. But again, it, it's just all it all dovetails into each other and it's all interconnected and it's you know for me i see a pattern again pattern recognition you know and you said steve that whole area where you are is very um it's like spook central right the the, the cia took over an old what was an army base or an air force base well they've been there for quite a while i mean you know eisenhower when he had his heart attack was at fitzsimmons which is where the anschutz medical center is now it's sent around built up all around that whole area okay uh that's just directly to the north and then to the uh to the west was the old lowry air force base which was uh initially one of the places where the the, the whole uh, intelligence service for the uh, nuclear you know a, uh, icbm programs took uh took place and uh that eventually turned into a cia campus and then it was shut down and a lot of it moved out to buckley where they have this uh, strategic space defense listening system of course and you see these big huge balls these golf ball type antenna system set up out there but this is not also very far from dia you've heard about the denver airport you know the rocky mountain arsenal there's a lot of stuff going on around in that area and uh it seems like they're just trying to lock down and maybe even do experiments and things like that on that little community i grew up in that area you know i remember being just right in this area and uh it seems very strange these days because there's so many people that seem to come in and out of that location somehow connected with uh you know dummy front corporations or 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 people like that and uh it seems as if of course you know this last escapade with uh uh, police chief uh, dan oates locking down 40 people looking for a bank robber i even thought that was staged to be honest with you i mean they're just testing the community there it's almost could could that have been a preparatory, a staged preparatory. Here's here's some more speculation. I mean, that could have been a staged preparatory event for what you saw take place earlier this morning. Sure, it's yeah. just like a, they're trying to find out how much they can, how much tolerance they can, you know, conduct upon these people. But I don't know if the, I, I, honestly, I don't know if that. Um, I, I don't know if the bank robbery, it could have been, but I don't know if it was because it really wouldn't. It, it they didn't serve to do anything for them. You know what I mean? Their their reaction today was very. Yeah, they were there in 90 seconds, and, but they didn't have a gunfight with the guy. I mean, that's another thing that's suspicious. He didn't put up a fight. He, he shot this place up and then went and sat by his car or in his car and then waited for the cops to come over. And he was like, hey, you know, I, I give up. And the cops even said he, there was no resistance whatsoever. Right. I mean, and they, you, mind you, cops will charge you for resisting if you say, hey, you're hurting me with the cuffs. So, you know, this guy is sitting there. No resistance at all, you know. Uh, all all uh, uh, you know, very nice to them. All very, uh, I don't know how to describe the word. Um, well, cordial, being very cordial. He was all cordial and polite to them. And here you have this this uh, media boogeyman being made out to be. He wants to kill randomly, and he he wants to kill everyone. But if he did that, why didn't he kill the cops? It just doesn't make any sense. If he was out to kill everybody, why didn't he kill the cops too? Unless he was under strict instructions to only shoot people in the movie theater and then that's it and not engage the police officers. Kind of like coming down off a high, man. Yeah. You know, you go, go in, shoot the place up, you walk outside, all of a sudden snap, oh, I'm back to being normal. Oh, I think I did something bad. I'll wait for the police right here. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, because that—that's usually what happens. Most, most people's normal reactions are to be like, "Oh, I'll just hang out and wait for the cops." Again, he was yeah. supposedly bent on killing everybody and shooting up the place and killing lots of innocent people, right? But yet he didn't engage the police. And I don't want to hear, "Oh, he wouldn't have been—he wouldn't have stood a chance." Um, 
he obviously they say he had body armor and a, and a helmet, and neck protector, groin protector, leg protector. If he had a beta mag, he would have stood a, uh, you know, he he probably would have at least stood a better chance than if he was just standing there with his dingus in his hand. So this this story doesn't make sense. The guy to be waiting for the cops to come, you shoot people. And then you wait for the cops to come. And ha- if they only took 90 seconds to get there from the time that it was reported, that means that this whole fracas took less than five minutes to unfold. How did this guy know that he was going to have time to do all this and then sit and wait for the cops to respond unless they knew their response time to the police already? You know what people should look up is if the cops have had any sort of... Um, uh, uh, calls to the movie theater in the past like 12 months over something similar uh, with an armed individual or a fight or something that would cause them to have uh, a a decent you know response time and and actually go through the records and see if there was because if there was then somebody would have been gauging the cops response time so they would have known how, I mean this is a way to find out whether or not obviously the guy planned this so it, yeah. it, it, even if he was a lone nut and he planned it, you'd still want to look into this and see if he had actually sat back and whether he called in false things or whether he waited to, to, you know, to, to see if something would happen or monitor it to, to whatever. You would want to know that, right? So what's the harm in investigating it and finding out whether or not the, uh, somebody you know, actually tested to see the response times? I mean, that's, if the guy was going to plan this, right, that's, you would have to look into that. You'd have to think, well, maybe he did. Maybe he sat back and called in fake calls or something. So people should look into that, whether it was a BS call or maybe a fight call. But I would look for the BS ones. I would look for fake you know, calls of someone with a gun or something to prompt the cops to get there in a hurry. And, you know, something that wouldn't set them off too much, but he'd still be able to sit back somewhere and monitor their, their response time. So he would know how much time he had roughly to pull off this event. Either way, whether he was controlled or not controlled, that's something that should be looked into. And it's just, uh, again, all of this has to be taken into account. And I've been looking at this all day and my brain's been spinning. So, just a ton of info. I urge you to do the same, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to break. We'll break back. In 2010, millions of people were awakened to the question of what? Now the next question that remains to be answered is, why in the world are they spraying an investigative look into one of the many agendas associated with chemtrail geoengineering programs, weather control? Why in the world are they spraying? Premiering and streaming live August 18th at the three-day event, Consciousness Beyond Chemtrails Conference and Fundraiser in Los Angeles. For more info, go to www.cbclive2012.com. Why in the world are they spraying? Order your copy today at www.whyintheworldarethespraying.com. Watch the premiere live August 18th at the three-day event, Consciousness Beyond Chemtrails Conference and Fundraiser in Los Angeles. For more info, go to www.cbclive2012.com. Why in the world are they spraying? And if you control the weather, you're going to control the planet. It's that simple. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Final segment of tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. I wanted to play the commercial for Mike Murphy's new film. I promised him uh, earlier today that I would have played it uh, tonight when I was playing uh, uh, the interview I did with him that I originally planned. So I am a man of my word, and I will be playing uh, the interview uh, this weekend, this Sunday, and going over... Uh, geoengineering, chemtrails, and more. So tune in this Sunday, 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the Orion Talk Radio Network, ryantalkradio.com. I want to thank everybody for tuning in like I always do. Uh, You guys are an integral part of the show. And, uh, you know, stay with us because we still have uh, about another half hour here to go. So uh, hang out, pull up a chair, get something to drink. Uh, We're going to get right back into it. Now, with this shooting, guys, there's a few things because, I mean, there's so much to go over and so many points that we could just sit and try to hammer home over and over and over again. And, you know, things that we could point to that even a two hour show uh, isn't enough time. So there's a few things that I don't want to gloss over or forget about this, this whole thing. And uh, part of it is uh, 
I said that this is a PSYOP in the beginning, and a lot of people don't know what a PSYOP is. PSYOP is short for psychological operation. And that being said, they would be using this to control you because of your emotional reaction. Again, the Hegelian dialectic problem reaction solution. So when I say that this is a PSYOP, I don't mean that it's faked and that these were actors and that people weren't hurt because you'll get the people that will attack you for that and say, so you're just saying you're, this was all staged. When I say that it's a staged event, I mean that, yes, people really did get killed, but the shooter isn't what the media or the authorities would have you believe. And it's never actually as cut and dry as you would believe, ever. None of these stories are. You know, they, they brought up Gabrielle Giffords today, guys. And my retort to any of the arguments about Gabrielle Giffords being shot is, where is the video evidence there were over 200 videos from people with cameras, cell phones, and surveillance cameras covering the event, and yet we have yet to see one of them. Why is that? Because maybe we'll see something that would indicate that maybe she wasn't the intended target and the judge that got shot was. Because guess what the judge that got shot and killed, guess what he did? He ruled against Clinton and the assault weapons ban. And he, he was an uh, advocate for the Second Amendment. And he conveniently is the one that got murked. And I'm not saying that Gabby didn't get shot, but it's just very interesting that uh, nobody covers that. Nobody, everybody brings that up. Everybody throws her out. Oh, God, you know, Gabrielle Gifford, she was shot too. All oh, the Columbine stuff. But they never, you know, mainstream media, they love to throw that in your face to get the emotional reaction and try, you know, f to formulate a bond between all of those scenarios with their official version and their agenda in your head, but they never really touch on the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that's really, you know, just, I guess, kooky is not a good word. Um, shady is a better term. The shady things that go on, the shady um, elements to each of these events. You know, again, with uh, Giffords, where's all the video? What are we going to find out that's more, I mean, we already know that there's shady stuff, but what else do you think we're going to find out? In the, in the next coming days. I think that'll be really telling to see how they try to shape the story in the next few days. That is how we're going to be able to tell uh, what their agenda is going to be after, you know, over the course of time now. You're going to be, if, if someone says, oh, they're not going to go after guns, yeah, right. The mayor of LA, one of the chatters put it in uh, the uh, chat box it, during the show here. The mayor of L.A. is already calling for an assault weapons ban. That wouldn't have stopped this guy from killing. He would have walked in with some handguns and extended magazines. Oh, well, then we, we take away extended magazines. So then he would have walked in double fisting two handguns and just made sure he was a better shot. I mean, this, this is ridiculous. You can't legislate away bad things. And it's interesting that a lot of these mayors that call, come out and, you know, uh, a lot of these people, these politicians, whatever, uh, you know, talking heads, all these people always push the same talking points and the same agenda. You know, the bodies aren't even cold yet. Autopsies aren't even being done yet. And they're already, uh, you know, they're already pontificating about how guns should be taken away from people. And, and again, I have to reiterate the fact that this happened in a gun-free zone right up the street from the police station. So these people were supposedly right in the heart of the, the ever-loving, you know, protective arms of the government where nothing bad could happen because they've legislated away their right to carry guns in that area, and yet somebody with a gun still went in and shot people. Well, I guess that shoots that whole thing to hell. No pun intended. Yeah. Literally. I mean, it, how, are, how does anybody look at this any other way? I can tell you how, because they're getting you to not use logic. They're getting you to, to think emotionally. They were, the cops were there already, not in the, the theater, which is shady, but right up the street. This is supposedly a safe area, right? There's cameras, police. They've legislated away guns, so it's a gun-free zone. And yet somebody still went in there and did this heinous crime. So obviously that doesn't work. Legislation, gun control legislation does not work. If people were armed in that theater, this would have gone much differently. I don't know how many times I could reiterate that. Well, you know, they talked about the Virginia Tech shootings, too. And there's another situation. Guy up on stage, nobody's armed. So he can stand there all day and just pick off whoever he wants. Every time there's an incident like this, 
the anti-gun nuts come crawling out of the woodwork like the bunch of cockroaches that they are, and they start screaming more gun control, more gun control. I'm sorry, my idea of gun control is hitting what you're aiming at. You take the guns away from people, and you're leaving yourself open for situations exactly like this. And they just had drills for this, too. Uh, again, thanks to the chatters. Uh, you know, Again, that's why I always say the, the people that listen, the listeners, are an integral part of the show. Somebody threw in a link, and it, it, uh, it was a video, and they're talking about how uh, the, the guy that made the video was showing how there was... Uh, drills, and I believe DHS might have been involved, but last year there were drills for a mall shooting in Colorado right there. So, in Denver. So you have this massive mall shooting drill where the event that kind, that did take place, something similar, these guys had a drill for last year, and suddenly it comes to fruition. Now, I, I don't know about you, but all the time this seems to happen. And I don't want to hear people say, well, that's why they drill Popeye. That's why they call it a drill. No, 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 no. The way they do these drills, it's to condition people so that when the very same scenario does happen in real life, they're accepting of cops running around with assault rifles and in full riot gear and of bringing on a police state and banning guns and everything else. And the, it also helps, the training also helps acquiesce the cops to being paramilitary forces. Trust me, I, I was a firefighter. We, back in the day, we used to call them uh, FEMA drills. We had to do them once a year at least. And, uh, you know, you had the FEMA drill. It was a big event. They would fake a plane crash or some sort of earthquake. And then over the course of time, it went from plane crashes and earthquakes and mass casualty events to... Uh, you know, like bioweapons attacks and all that stuff. But you can see how it, 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 it started off as uh, under good intentions. You know, you get the local guys in each year to do the training. And then w without even realizing it, you know, suddenly five years in, they're training for, you know, a martial law scenario. And they don't even realize it. It's, in, you know, what do they call it? Incrementalization, you know, and, and compartmentalization. It's the same thing. They, they slowly get everybody. It's a very big game they play. If that's why the police and the first responders and stuff, they aren't our enemy. They're being played like they are, and a lot of them are buying into that and playing up with their false ego and buying into that badge and everything else. But there are people that are playing all of us like pieces of chess, like chess pieces on a board, you know? And they are playing us like fools. And we need to understand the game to understand what's going on. And events like this just push people to say, I don't, I don't want to be free. You know, I, I need a cop at my front door. But the, the cops were right up the street. They didn't protect you anyway. You were in a gun-free zone. So calling for more gun bans obviously doesn't help. I mean, we, again, I go back and look at the, the events, the two events that happened in the past, like, week and a half, okay, with shootings like this, and look at how drastically different they were and understand why they were different. The one where everybody was killed happened in a gun-free zone. Nobody else was armed except the guy killing people. In the other situation, it, did, it happened in... It, there was no such thing as the gun-free zone. Everybody has the concealed weapons permit there, and one of the people who had his weapon on him decided to act, and because of his actions, nobody was killed. Not even including the people he was shooting at, okay? And nobody was killed. None of the, pe none of the patrons of the, the Internet caf Cafe were killed, yet... All these people were killed because they couldn't defend themselves. I'm not saying some of those people wouldn't have been shot and, 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 and injured. It, you know, you, you can't, again, bad things happen. But this reeks of set up from the door. And their reaction to it is, they, I mean, the bodies aren't even cold. And these people are out there with pre-prepared speeches talking about how we, they need to get rid of guns. Well, it's the Ministry of Truth, Popeye. And then you get Piers Morgan. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, and people buy into that because they've, they've emotionally bonded with these dirt bags that work for CNN and stuff. But that's why they make them pop culture icons. That's why they're not news reporters or anchors. There's not that perf I mean, not saying that Walter Cronkite or any of them were any better, but they, they at least had a different way of going about it. There was some sort of news professionalism where now it's more very pop culture-ish. And that is to blur the lines. And again... It, that 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 covers the the whole Joker aspect of it. If this guy, if that was the com, say they they this guy was mind controlled, and that was a, the one of the compartmentalized 
personalities was this this character that really thought he was the Joker or whatever. Uh, the, the thing that stands out about this to me is, and I'm not saying he's not he, he couldn't have been controlled, but the thing that stands out about it to me is that if this guy was supposed to play this character out again, why didn't he shoot the police and and, and not just the innocent civilians? Because the Joker in the movies was the, the nutty; he would kill police, you know, anyone. He didn't care, and yet. It's almost like he had an order not to engage the police and only to engage the unarmed civilians. So that just, it, it doesn't make sense. There's things that stick out. And that whole Joker thing, um, that blurs the lines of the movies and reality. And I saw something today before we came on air, but I didn't get a chance to look into it. But maybe the listeners want to look into this. You guys can look into it. I, I will further, and we can discuss it on further shows. But... Uh, which I'm, I'm sure the topic's going to come up on further shows. But apparently there was, a, I think it was 1986 co- uh, Batman comic book where the Joker actually did something of this very sort where he busted into a movie theater or something and shot up a, a movie theater. And this this whole thing is very uh, closely related to this uh, 19, I'll say, I think it was 1986 or 1980-something comic. Uh, and I, I believe it was a uh, Batman comic, if I remember correctly, and it was the Joker that did it. And you have all these again. Is it predictive programming? Well, no, not if they go back and they they you know they could have used that comic book. They could have found that storyline and they could have used that to program this kid. I mean, that's how this stuff works. You have to look up MK Ultra and mind control. I could, I, I mean, I could harp on this for hours on end. Look up Project Monarch. You, if you really want to get an understanding of things, read Kathy O'Brien's book and uh, Bryce Taylor's book. Bryce Taylor's book is Thanks for the Memories, and Kathy O'Brien's book is The Transformation of America. Get both books, read them, and that's just a start. You have to look up – I mean, they'll, there's things that she'll comment about, and then you can go uh, uh, do the research from there, meaning her, uh, Kathy, and Bryce too, and you can go do the research from there. This is a very, very deep rabbit hole, as it were, okay, when, mind control in itself, and from – and I don't want to say 100% yet because I don't like to just jump on things. I, I, and I always, you know, I, I chastise people that do that. So I, I will wait the 72 hours I normally do. But from for right now, uh, for all from what I see, this looks like it's a staged event. I, I can't 100% confirm that it is. And I'll give it, a, I always try to give it a, a cursory 72-hour period. But uh, already the alarm bells are going off. There's just a lot of things. And believe me, there are times when I've said on air, hey, this is, this is just something that's being taken out of context. And uh, I, I'm pretty accurate. So I, I don't want to just jump on this and say it's a 100% staged event. But, I mean, with how I am, I always say take at least three days, you know, 72 hours to look at things. I already, first day, am you know, pretty close to, I'm about 95% to 98% being convinced that this is completely a staged event just because of the stuff that, that, you know, we've come up, we've come out with and the the information already. So I want to see what comes out over the course of the next couple of days, but I don't really think that I'm already, you know, pretty much there that this wasn't uh, uh, some random thing, that this was a staged event and that this is actually uh, a psyop and they are using it. And the only reasons why I say that is because of uh, the evidence that's out there already and because of the reaction by the politicians. Again, these people aren't even, you know, they're still in the morgue. Obviously, they're going to do, uh, uh, what do you call it, post-mortems on them. So these people haven't even had the, you know any of this stuff done to the, the the victims families haven't had any of this stuff done to their loved ones yet they're still grieving and these politicians already have premeditated pre-written speeches that they're out there you know and i know they already have talking points but man the, when you see this massive uh this level of co- uh, uh, i'm trying to think of what the not coordination i guess you could say coordination the level of coordination that they have in getting out this anti-gun message over the past 24 hours since this this incident happened it just shows you their reaction is very very telling you know it's like a, de- a detective will tell you when you go when they go to interview somebody uh, say a woman's husband was murdered and they go to interview the woman uh, or the, the 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 spouse, whoever, man or woman, and that spouse is like, oh, 
and they're very cold about it, that, that sets something off. That, that, that sets off warning bells in the detective's eyes. And in this eyes, this should set something off. I mean, they're not even out there trying to politic and be like, we love you people. We're so sad. Obama was. But most of these people were already out there. They, they, they were like, we're sorry for what happened. But guns, 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 bad, 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 bad. Fear, 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 fear. Gun ban, gun ban, gun ban. And again, the U.N. gun ban's coming up in a week and a half. You know, is, is this meant to quell the rage? Uh, is this meant to push the Senate to vote for this thing? Uh, that's what I see. And I will, again, I'll go by my, my, the way I handle things, but I got to tell you already, you know, 20, not even 20, almost 24 hours into it, and I can tell you uh, it already looks staged. And uh, it, 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 when it first happened, I said, oh, here we go. Just hearing what was going on right off the bat, I was like, oh, this is not good. And even if it was a lone nut, even if it was, you know, some random thing, they're just going to use it to try to go after people's guns. It doesn't matter. Again, look at their reactions. They don't care about these people. You think Bloomberg cares about these people? And again, uh, the whole thing with the commissioner and him and, they, and them coming out with stuff. Again, how is it okay for him to come out and release information before the police chief in the area where it, the, the incident happened? How is it, you know what I mean? Uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, how is that police yeah. chief not pissed off? How is not that, that not breaking like some sort of chain of uh, evidence or protocol? I mean, I, I guess that means that the commissioner of the New York City police can just pontificate on any crime he wants to now. Right? Somebody gets killed in Texas and he's going to, like, you know, down in Austin or wherever, and he's just going to call up uh, Art Aceveda over there and find out some of the details. And then before Art can even go on, uh, you know, TV, he's going to come out and start pontificating about the details of it. That doesn't make any sense unless you're trying to push an agenda, which, you know, sometimes these guys jump the gun. Maybe he didn't know that, the, that the, they, they didn't come out publicly and say it over there yet, which happens a lot. Sometimes things, you know, there is a little bit of chaos, and sometimes they get their wires screwed up. Murphy's Law it does happen. Either way, uh, I, I would say I'm about 90, yeah, I would say even probably 98% convinced that this is definitely a PSYOP, and this was a staged event. And that's, that makes it even more heinous, because that means innocent people died for these people's political agenda. That should really piss people off. Again, yeah, you should be mad at the guy that pulled the trigger, but let's try to find out the real uh, deal behind the situation. Uh, it is not. Uh, it, it is not disrespectful in any way, shape, or form to try to find the truth out for these people. I mean, someone's got to do uh, a real investigation into this for them. Lord knows the government won't. Okay, and if there is a real investigation done by the local authorities, I'm sure it'll be covered up, and the facts won't be. You know, it, it, you won't get the, the the facts of everything. It'll be somehow locked away or whatever. The only thing you'll get is what they want you to hear, and then the politicians and the media will take it over. And, you know, just an example, look what happened with the, the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman thing. You know, they, they cried yeah. racism, 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 right? And the media kept pushing that. And then the FBI went and investigated it. And the FBI, after investigating over 30 people, said that they couldn't find one instance where there was even a slight bit of evidence to support the fact that he, he had any racist views and that the shooting was racially based. Yet, the the media stoked that emotion in people for weeks, and so did a lot of these politicians. And they're going to do the same thing with this. I'm, I, I foresee, this is what I foresee. I foresee calls for gun bans, which you already see, uh, call for, calls for bans on high-capacity magazines, beta magazines, uh, more push for this treaty uh, to be ratified in the Senate, you're going to see Bloomberg and all the rest of these people exploiting the hell out of this. That's what I foresee. And we called this, by the way, months and months and months ago uh, on air, on here and on, on Joe's show, I said it, that and, and other hosts did as well. I'm not trying to you know, be like, oh, me, 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 me. But a bunch of us called it out and said that they were going to pull stuff off like this. You were going to see, uh, you know, shooting events and stuff like this with these mind control people. And you were going to see things like this happen and a push for gun control. And bam, here it is. So, you know, there's got to be some validation to that. Although uh, I'm very sad and upset that it is validated in the way it is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time. Thank you for listening. I love you all. Catch you again Sunday. Research, research, research. We're out.